In the year 333 BC, exactly on November 12, Darius III Codomanus, Persian king, lord of Asia, and Alexander the Great, Macedonian emperor, faced each other at Issus, precisely between the river Pius and the river Pinaro, a mountainous region located between Turkey and Syria. Alexander had inherited from his father, Philip II, a robust army, practically invincible with which he had undertaken a campaign against the Achaemenid Empire. After successive victories, he had decided to confront the Persian king directly, and so he marched his 35,000 Greek, Macedonian, Illyrian, and Thracian soldiers through Anatolia, with the firm objective of entering Syria. However, the young Alexander did not count on the fact that the army of Darius III exceeded 100,000 men and that he was being surrounded from the rear. The battle terrain presented both armies with an enormous challenge. It was a wide plain crossed by the Pias and Pinaro rivers, bounded on one side by the Amanus Mountains and on the other by the sea in the present-day Turkish province of Hatay. A year earlier, the army of Alexander the Great had defeated the Persians in the Battle of Granicus, so they now had a strong desire for revenge with which they intended to annihilate the invaders, thus annulling the momentum of invasion and conquest of the Macedonian. However, they could not evade the strategic onslaught of Alexander and his troops that, although smaller in number, were relentless even taking advantage of how challenging the plain was for combat. Although the numerous Persian attack was a surprise for Alexander, he knew well that he was going to face a military force for which an iron organization was required. Thus, he placed the veteran Parmenian in command of the cavalry on the left wing, facing the sea frontier, and Krateros as commander of the infantry on this flank. In the center, the infantry phalanx and the hoplites, and on the right wing, in the foothills of the mountains, he positioned himself as commander of his elite infantry. The spearmen, the rest of the cavalry, the heteroi, and the hypaspists strongly trained for defense and assault. Despite such a strategic organization, fear gripped even the high command. There are chronicles of the time that tell how Alexander revived the spirits of his army through a sacrificial ritual the night before. He invoked various marine deities such as Poseidon, the Nereids and Thetis, and made an offering of a quadriga, chariot pulled by four horses, which he threw into the ocean. On the other hand, Darius III took advantage of the shore with the vain intention of flanking the adversaries. He protected with palisades the areas of the river that were difficult to access. He covered the fords with infantry. He gave his heavy infantry the Cardassians, the order to attack the wing commanded by Parminian. On his right wing, on the seashore, he positioned the cavalry, and to protect his center, he arranged the royal guard of immortals and the Greek mercenaries. The resistance of Alexander and his troops was undeniable. They even managed to break the Persian formation on the right side. The royal cavalry advanced with speed towards the center of the Persian formation, just where Darius III was, who had a solid defense by his army, thanks to which he was finally able to flee. With his escape also fled in disband, first the light troops, then all the other survivors. Darius III fled, leaving even his family behind. His daughters, Basin Stateira and Dripetis, his wife Stateira, and his mother, Sisigambis. Alexander the Great became close to this family, married Basin Stateira, and was considered as another son by Sisigambis. Darius also left behind much of his treasure, which was appropriated by Alexander the Great, as well as his imperial robe, shield, and bow. This meant the beginning of the end of Persian power. Many high commanders of his army were killed, and all this led to the Battle of Issos being a shameful stain on the history of the Persians. The Macedonian advance left in its wake thousands of corpses. 
approximately 7,000 Macedonians and 20,000 Persians. Alexander the Great's audacity lay in the fact that he faced an army superior in numbers, in an extremely difficult terrain. In addition, the fact that he himself had led the battle, transmitted to his troops the thirst for victory. According to the chronicles of this campaign, he was wounded by a sword in the thigh. The defeat meant that the Persians lost access to the Mediterranean Sea and all their provinces in Asia Minor. On the contrary, for Alexander, it represented a great triumph. So he decided to call the region Alexandria ad Isum, Alexandretta, to commemorate it. This was a key access point for the Belen Pass or Syrian Gates, a key channel for trade routes to Mesopotamia and India. In fact, it is one of the most important conquests Alexander made in Asia, a battle that went down in history even as it was portrayed in the mosaic that was apparently made in 325 BC, either by Philoxenus of Eretria or by Apelles, and was found in Pompeii, found in the opulent House of the Faun in 1831 AD after being covered by lava and ash from Vesuvius. Don't close the video yet. Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the video. It will help us grow and keep making much more content. Now, with nothing more to add, we say goodbye.